communities that are permanent residents of Guam. Uh, so we do view ourselves as, as part of the Guam community and, uh, and uh, we work very hard to, to keep our relationships close and support each other. So I'll leave it at that for now. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Miller. Now, Dr. Berg, you're on. Okay. Um, first, thank you, Margaret, for the invitation. Um, uh, sometimes it's a, a matter of luck that uh, I don't uh, well prepare a speech and uh, review my notes and the like simply because I'm too busy during the day and uh, hope that I can get here and so-called wing it. And I think sometimes there's an advantage to that in that uh, I will then tend to focus on what the main issues are rather than trying to prepare some uh, speech that uh, gives a, um, uh, a well thought out approach. Uh, because I don't think it's actually necessary in this case. Uh, my perspective, although perhaps not unique, is one that um, is, uh, uh, comes from being here for about 15 years now and starting out uh, at Naval Hospital on the other side of the fence or the inside of the fence and having been on the executive committee of Naval Hospital, then having been on the executive committee of Balmora Hospital, and then now uh, having been in the private sector for about uh, eight or nine years, having actually no affiliation per se with either one of those facilities. So I'm a little feedback here. Um, so I, I'm in looking at how things have changed over the last 15 years, it's very clear that there has been uh, improvement overall. We do have a reasonably good quality of base medical services here, but there have been a lot of areas that have not progressed where the, whereas others have. So for instance, from my perspective, we have extraordinarily good dialysis care, which was seriously lacking here before. So if that's an area where you happen uh, as a, an individual or a family member or what have you to need care, you're in good shape. If you need an MRI, we have a world-class MRI. There are other areas uh, where we have uh, excellent standards, and there are some where we are grossly inadequate. It's not just that we have one cardiologist, we have no pediatric cardiologist. So God help you if your child needs a pediatric cardiology consultation emergently uh, on a weekend. Good luck. Uh, we are seriously lacking there. We have a huge number of people with hepatitis B and hepatitis C. We don't have a hepatologist, a liver specialist. Uh, you could even back up a little bit and say we don't even have a gastroenterologist. We have nobody to take a look down into the stomach who is specifically trained. We have people who uh, fill the gap. Uh, we have, uh, for instance, general surgeons who do vascular surgery, but we don't have a vascular surgeon. And yet we have probably the highest rate of amputation due to diabetes uh, in the United States of America as a community, but no vascular surgeon. So some areas, again, dialysis, great, and that's improved dramatically, but the private sector hasn't been able to do it uh, on, on, by itself to provide uh, uh, the level of care that we as a territory of the United States of America deserve to have, and why? Well, I think uh, a, a way to look at that is simply to look at uh, the issue of power and water on Guam. Uh, as uh, you look at it, there is a public utilities agency. There is a, a public utilities commission, if you will, as it's often called in other communities, a, that handles power and water. Why? Well, if you go to GIGO, uh, and GIGO said, well, you know, we're going to use pipes that are this big, and Dededo said, we're going to use pipes that are this big, we're going to run into problems supplying water. Uh, if you uh, happen to live in Dededo and there was no uh, uh, power authority uh, and they didn't have a particularly skilled uh, individual to run their uh, sub-power plant, whatever it's called, but if you live in, in uh, 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 Agate, they did, you get good power in one, you get bad power in the other. Uh, it doesn't work that way. We recognize that power and water are fundamental aspects uh, to a modern life in this country. And so we have to have somebody to, to oversee the distribution of power because it is fundamental that we all have at least reasonable access to power. We must have reasonable access to water. That cannot be done in a haphazard fashion. Neither can health care. We don't have a public utilities agency for health care, and that shows. We don't have a uh, recognition by our senior policymakers on this island 
that health care must be handled in a comprehensive fashion. So, no, we don't have uh, and, uh, a quarter inch pipes in Dedado and three quarter inch pipes in Gigo, but we do have electronic systems that don't communicate, where my uh, ability to communicate with Cedar sinai is instant uh, to send uh, a CAT scan where I don't have a pediatric cardiologist, but we do have ability to do pediatric echocardiograms and send them instantly to Anaheim Memorial Hospital, but I can't communicate with Guam Memorial Hospital because they have a totally different system. If that seems logical to anybody, uh, then I really need to be uh, uh, shaken and woken up because I think as I feel awake, it seems so extraordinarily illogical that we do not have a comprehensive approach to healthcare on Guam. So, as we look towards this buildup and things on one side of the fence and on the other side, and what do we do with the temporary workers? Yes, we will be able to provide a basic level of care uh, during that buildup. And yes, the private sector will step up to the plate and fill the gap uh, where it needs to be filled. But is that band-aid, uh, urgent, crisis approach going to work? No, it will not. We have a neurosurgeon. Why? Because of one episode where there was outrage in the community where a, uh, a young man had a need for a neurosurgeon and there was none. And so the government brilliantly uh, was able to recruit one very quickly. But that approach has never been recognized as necessary in other areas because there is no uh, episode. We have to wait for the next crisis. When someone uh, steps up and produces data that shows uh, an urgent situation, there's an urgent reaction. The irony is that if you look at that urgent uh, reaction, uh, we usually do uh, pretty well, so that now we pretty much have a neurosurgeon here all the time. Whereas some things that have been in existence that no one would dare approach, uh, the, the irony that uh, the, one of the uh, things that came out of recent research on Guam was that we have perhaps the highest rate of lung cancer in the United States of America. And yet, uh, the, those who bring in tobacco here uh, do so tax-free at the wholesale level. Again, illogical and, and I think reflects an, a, a lack of senior policymakers understanding the need for, comp for a comprehensive approach. So, as I said, I didn't come here with a prepared speech. It, to me, this is the obvious aspect of what is missing on Guam is uh, what, in fact, uh, Ms. Netadog had mentioned, and then I suddenly realized that's, that's the, really the only issue here. She said there is no policy, there is no comprehensive approach to mental health. Sanctuary stands out as another uh, outstanding uh, uh, aspect of health care in this community and social services, but it is not built in. There's no built-in approach to uh, uh, its, uh, how it fits into our community. Uh, that's where, that's my perspective. Yeah, we can do it. We'll, we'll be all right. But I think that things won't get dramatically better. And the, the recognition that a private individual has said uh, that, that he wants to build a hospital, a private hospital, uh, is, I think, uh, uh, representative of the lack of uh, uh, a comprehensive approach. I guess I'm getting redundant at this point, so I'll stop. <laughs> no, but the point is well taken, I think. Um, and I think, too, uh, the point, and it, it's a basic point that I think we have to make sure we don't, we don't forget, that do we feel as a society that health care, whether it's physical health or mental health, is a fundamental right of our people? And I think we need to make sure we don't lose that as we're going through this conference today and tomorrow. But thank you, Dr. Berg. Um, we, I have a question um, that I'll give all the panelists a chance to answer, uh, depending on the time. Um, how is your organization planning to provide additional services to a larger population? And what does your organization need to have in place in order to be prepared for the population influx? I thought we'd start with Mr. Roberto, since you have a large, large agency. It's a large agency. And um, I've uh, put forward three priorities with, uh, with respect to um, the buildup, but also with um, um, current situations at hand that we need to look at. And, and the first priority goes to um, environmental health that uh, 
with the influx of uh, temporary workers, with the influx of populations increase and what have you, what comes with it is, is uh, um, a lot of resources being, be it food commodity issues, be it uh, 